here with reaction to Donald Trump's pick so far. Now the confirmation process will likely go in January is the incoming Senate Conference Chair, Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, congratulations on the leadership position and also you're going to be Chairman of Intelligence. But your thoughts about what we've seen so far and the speed in which we're getting these nominees. Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. We shouldn't be surprised that President Trump is moving quickly. Uh, he's already been the president. He knows how to do the job. He knows the kind of people he wants on the job with him. And he campaigned on the promise to shake things up in Washington, to not just go with conventional types of selections. People that want to go, he wants people that are going to go into these departments and agencies and actually clear out a, a lot of the excess bureaucratic waste and the rot, and make sure that these department and agencies are working on behalf of the American people, not on behalf of their own interests and fiefdom. So I don't think anyone should be surprised that President Trump is moving fast or that he's making some unconventional nominees. They're going to shake things up. That's exactly what he campaigned on. The main thing is, let's, uh, let's have it. Uh, do the nomination process, but do it quickly. You point out that in 2009, Barack Obama set a land speed record with his confirmations. Can you do the same? Yeah, Brian, I expect us to move very promptly. The new Senate will be sworn in on January 3rd. That's 17 days before Donald Trump is inaugurated on January 20th. We can have committee hearings on these nominees before President Trump is formally inaugurated and can cement the nominations. And that means that on January 20th, as soon as he finishes what well, I'm sure will be a great inaugural address and turns around and walks inside the Capitol, he can sit down and sign the papers that submit those nominations formally. That means the committees can immediately vote on them and we can move them to the floor. In 2009, the Senate confirmed nine of Barack Obama's cabinet nominees in just the first 48 hours. They refused, the Democrats refused to do that in 2017, but I, I think that should be the floor that yep. we expect in terms of cooperation from Democrats this time. And, and there's not going to be the kind of leisurely pace that the Senate has sometimes taken in the past. I expect that we're going to stay in session. We're going to work around the clock Good. to process these nominations to make sure Donald Trump gets his appointees into place promptly. You're in armed services as well as intelligence. I'm sure you probably know to a degree that Israel looks like they have destroyed the active nuclear weapons research facility in Iran with their last uh, with their last hit. I did not know they even targeted that, but it looks as though they also wiped out Iran's missile defense. Iran is threatening to hit Israel. The president's going to have to, the president elect is going to have to deal with this when he gets into office. What would your recommendation be? I know he's got good people around him too about what we should do with this uh, unique opportunity to uh, maybe take out this weapons program once and for all? Well, first, I would say that Israel faces a serious threat for the next 10 weeks, and I would urge President Biden to stand by Israel to make sure that Israel is well defended and that we back Israel to the hilt. But I know that's what President Trump will do from the very beginning. They'll back Israel to the hilt. Iran is the key threat in the Middle East, not only to Israel, but to the United States. They're behind terrorist organizations like Hamas and Hezbollah. But Iran is now exposed on its flanks in the way it hasn't been for decades. Hamas is largely destroyed. Hezbollah's missiles and rocket forces in Lebanon have been severely degraded. That was the main deterrent that Iran used against Israel. And now Israel and Iran have exchanged missile strikes twice. Israel's have been much more effective, as you say, destroying a lot of uh, Iran's air defenses. So we should back Israel to the hilt. And the one thing that President Trump has always been clear about, just like Prime Minister Netanyahu, is that Iran cannot be allowed to have a nuclear weapon or even be on the mm -hmm. verge of having a nuclear weapon. And what you people should understand that when we put up that map of Iran, you know who agrees with what Senator Tom Cotton said? Almost every other nation in that area. They also see as Iran as the problem, and nobody wants them to have nuclear weapons. Uh, Senator, thanks so much. Congratulations on all this change, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.